Hey, what is good? What is good? What is good? Ladies and gentlemen, of course you know who it is. Yours truly, Dr. Mike. Back again, once again, with another classic, interesting video for today. Now, you might as well buckle up, might as well grab your popcorn, might as well sit back, relax, and chill, because this one might be a long-ass video, okay? Because I got a lot of things that I want to talk about. This has the potential to be a very long video. I might even premiere it because I think that I would rather sit down and watch the replay with you guys and, you know, participate in the uh, comment section on this particular video because this is something that never really seems, well, it does for the most part, but nobody makes YouTube videos about it. I've seen comments on this on Twitter before in the past, Instagram before in the past, and, uh, this is something I want to talk about from my own personal perspective, okay? Will the Philippines ever have a representative in the Miss Universe pageant that is actually pure Filipina? And will she win it all? Will she take the crown if, if they do have a representative like that? Okay, first things first, congratulations to the Catriona chick, Catriona Gray. She did her thing. She is part Filipina, half as far as I know, half Australian, whatever it may be. Congratulations to her. She won. And I'm not shitting on her victory at all. I think she deserved it. She did her thing. I watched the replay. You know how they do the quick captions. And I was like, yeah, baby girl did her thing. Can't shit on her for nothing. But will the Philippines ever allow a pure Filipina? to represent the Philippines in the Miss Universe pageant. Now let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Because we have to realize that it's the Philippines, first and foremost, that chooses the individual that's going to represent the country. I repeat, at the national level, it is the Philippines themselves that chooses the person that is going to represent the Philippines, okay? So they go through the competition, the Miss Philippines 2018, 2019, and then the prior years before. And they make the choice to say, you know what? She's the one. She is the one that we want to represent us at a global universal level. We believe as the committee of the Philippine pageant circuit or whatever it is, whatever that governing body is, we believe that this is the one that gives us the best chance of representing the country and actually winning. So basically, if you ask me, and again, this I don't know how people are going to react to this. Don't shoot the messenger. Just, just listen to the message. Basically, what they're saying is, we haven't found a peer Filipina that we believe can represent us at a universal level that we feel confident enough to take it all the way. Now, I have seen women in the past that I personally believe are probably pure Filipina that have represented the competition in the past. Maybe the Miss Philippines from like the 70s, that one. Maybe she was pure Filipina. Don't quote me on that. I do not know. But I know Venus Raj, she had the look. Shamsi Soup Soup <laughs> and then that Janine chick they kind of had the look but if you haven't noticed they didn't quite win it all again no disrespect those girls putting that work in I think all of them as far as I remember the ones that I mentioned all of them finished in the top five okay so let's not shit on that they did accomplish something all right and I'm not shitting on them at all but I believe that Shamsi Soup Soup <laughs> Janine, I forgot her last name, the Tsunami Walk chick back in the day, and um, Venus Raj were the representatives that actually, in my personal opinion, represented what would be considered the peer Filipina look, okay? Um, but they quite didn't get the job done. And it's interesting because the only two in recent years that were able to get the job done were both half of something else. 
Let's think about that for a second. The two that were able to actually get the job done when the Miss Universe crown were half of something else. Pia Warsback, I believe she was half German. Don't quote me on that. I believe so. And then, of course, the young lady that just won now, the Catriona young lady. She's half Australian, I believe, or half Scottish, something like that. I can't remember. Somebody said that her father was Scottish. I, I don't know. I don't do the background. All I know is she wasn't pure Filipina. But let's talk about, to me, what represents pure Filipina. To me, a pure Filipina, a lot of people say there's no such thing. And it's true. Nine times out of ten, you're mixed with something else. There's a spit of something else. I want to sneeze. Hold on. Mm. Okay. Nine times out of ten, there is a spit of something in your bloodline that, um, how can I say this? That'll make you not pure Filipino. Like, I'm probably not 100% African American. I didn't do my DNA testing. I didn't do the mouth swab and send my shit to the DNA testing center because I believe those things are BS. But again, I'm probably not all 100% African American. All right, or African or whatever it may be, however you think, wherever you think I am from. But if both of your parents on your birth certificate are recognized as the by a nationality as Filipino, both parents recognized on the birth certificate as Filipino, then me, in my opinion, you are pure Filipino. Okay? But I think about the competition, how it all goes down at the local level, like I said before. They don't choose the darker skinned Filipinas to represent a lot of the time. To me, a pure Filipina, honestly, tan skin. Not, not, don't have to be this dark, okay? You don't have to be this shade of chocolate, but... You know, you got that tan skin about you, the morena, the morena skin. I think that morena skin, in my personal opinion, represents pure, true Filipinas. Now, if you have the Filipino Chinese look, you know, you got that light skin, baby, there is nothing wrong with you. It's just that you're Filipino Chinese or you're Filipino Korean, Filipino Japanese or Filipino mixed with something else. You are the mix. You're not pure Filipina. And if we look at the competitions in past years, the ones that they have chosen that have the look of the pure Filipina didn't quite get the job done. They didn't quite bring that crown home. So what does that say about the people? What does that say about the country and who they choose to represent themselves? What does that say about the individuals who accept things for the way that they are. I think deep down inside, honestly, I think deep down inside, the people who are chosen to make the decision for the young lady that is going to represent the Philippines in the Miss Universe pageants, they know deep down inside that they have a better chance of winning if they choose somebody who has Filipino blood, but they not necessarily full Filipina. It's almost like, yeah, she's Filipino enough. <laughs> you feel me? She's Filipino enough. She may not be pure Filipino, but fuck it. She's Filipino enough for us. All right? And it blows my mind. Like, I'm the type of person that if you're going to represent, I want to represent. You dig? <laughs> honestly, honestly to me, it's like, it's like if, um... Uh, the representative from Africa or like Kenya or Nigeria or whatever, some part of Africa is white. <laughs> you feel me? I know that seems far fetched, but let's say that she was born in Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, wherever she's representing. She's born there. She got her certificate there. She won the competition. She got chosen. Bam. That's y'all representative. She's got a birth certificate from the country, so she's born there, that is what it is. Whether her parents are, you know, African or not, she's born in the country, so technically she is of that particular nationality. <laughs> or at least from that country, I should say, not necessarily from that nationality. 
there have been times and discrepancies in the past when it comes to competitions like this where the representatives were questioned based on their, you know, background, you know, where they're from and stuff. Like, are they really representing the country? Because I think that all countries choose the young lady that they believe is going to give them the best opportunity to win it all. And again, I don't give a fuck who you are. Everybody want to win, right? I know for a fact if I'm going to enter a competition, I want to win. Second place is the first loser. Everybody know that. <laughs> I'm not that dramatic, but I'm just being real. If I'm going to enter in something, I'm going to be in it to win it. The person that the country chooses, they're backing this person financially. They're giving this person everything that they need to succeed at a higher level. So it's an investment. You understand? They get something out of it. But at the end of the day, who they choose to represent the country may not be of the skin complexion that you think she should be. And I have heard people before complain about this. There were like there was a there was a um, TV show here in the Philippines with uh, Enrique Hill and uh, what's that girl name? The cute one, the half American girl. Uh, fuck, I forgot her name. I I don't remember. But, you know what, I gotta find it, guys. Like I said, this video gonna be long, so y'all just sit back, relax. Like I said, I want y'all to be able to pay attention. I want y'all to be a part of this shit. But again, on this particular TV show, I'm gonna find the girl's name real quick. But on this particular TV show, they were supposed, they were two light, bright, damn near white, Filipina, mixed Filipinos. Uh, Enrique Hill is like Spanish and uh, Filipino, and the young lady that I'm trying to find her name, it's Enrique Hill and, oh my God, give me a minute, guys, and Liza Sobrano. Damn, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Her name is Liza Sobrano. I think she's half American and half Filipino. Don't get me wrong. Don't quote me on this shit. But they were a part of a uh, TV show that ended recently that were supposed to represent the indigenous. <sighs> Ooh, that felt better. They were part of a TV show that was supposed to represent the indigenous people and the mythological realm of the Philippines, like the past. You know, mythology and shit like that, you know. And the people of this particular past were tan skin. They were, they were of a darker pigmentation, okay? And people were bashing the they were bashing these people. Now, it's not the actor's fault, okay? Never blame the actor. It's just the people who are putting the show together that chose these people to lead. They signed on, and they put bronzer or skin bronzing creams and sprays and shit to make them look darker than they really were. So, the whole gripe about the entire situation is why do you have these basically light, really, really light Filipinos playing a role that was meant for somebody of a darker pigmentation, but you're painting them up. Not necessarily a black face. It wasn't that dramatic, but um, why are you painting them up when you can just hire people that are already that certain shade or tone that are probably very good actors that could play the role, but yet still you choose these people because this is what the audience wants. Because that's exactly what the audience wants. They like the people that they like. And if the people that they like aren't a certain skin complexion, who are we to say? Ties all in together with the whole Miss Universe situation. People who like a certain representative, it's, it, they like that person for a specific reason. Like I said before, it is because they believe that this is the one that can win it all for us. So I'm not mad that they've chosen who they've chosen in the past few years to represent the country. They know exactly what they're doing. Now again, there are so many variables when it comes to these particular competitions. With the Miss Philippines, you know, you gotta answer the questions correctly. You gotta do this, you gotta look a certain kind of way, you gotta play your part. And at the Miss Universe level, there are so many variables, you know, I think they change up the format and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to be able to prepare for the worst, answer the questions and be able to do that. So maybe they believe and don't don't quote me on this. Maybe they believe that when it comes to the answer portion uh, somebody who is mixed may answer the questions better. Somebody who understands English 
a little more, a little better than somebody else, may be able to answer the question better. Who knows the reason why they choose who they choose to represent the Philippines for these particular competitions, but I will tell you this. Can't be mad. They won. At the end of the day, you can't be mad at the results. You might have had a problem with it on the national level. You might have cried, maybe cried and complained about, oh, she doesn't really look Filipino all the way through till the competition. Then she wins. All of a sudden, everybody's like, yeah, she did it, she did it, she did it. Rest the roof, right? You might have complained the whole entire time, but you can't complain about the results. Can't complain about the results, man. She won. Ain't that what we wanted? We want winners, right? And she won. So despite anybody who may have had a confliction about it, although me personally, I'm not personally conflicted by it, but it's interesting. Will they ever choose a pure Filipina? Somebody whose mother and father are nationalities represented on a birth certificate that says that they're both Filipino, okay? And their parents were Filipino when their parents before them and before them. Will they ever have somebody represent the country that is pure Filipina and win it all? <laughs> you feel me? That's, that's the thing. It's one thing to win the Miss Philippines level, but can you go out there Put on the show that's necessary to win it all. That Catriona girl did it. Pia Wartzbeck did it. And I think Margie Moran. I want to say, it was was it Margie Moran? Did she win? Did she, I don't know. Was it Margie Moran? I don't remember the other young. I can't remember. She's a little bit older. I think it was in the 70s. But I think the Philippines won in the 70s as well. Again, I don't want anybody to shit on me and get all angry and in their feelings and shit about what I'm saying. I'm speaking some truth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sitting down. I don't I don't care about the scenic views right now. I mean, like I said, I got some videos coming up that may change the setting. You know, I might go out and do some, uh, you know, videos later on this week. But right now, this is where we are. This is the world that we are living in. I feel like I could get my best content out when I can sit down and have a peer conversation with my people. Have an interesting, intriguing, intellectual, stimulating conversation between you and me. Now, I know that I can't actually respond to you through the video at this particular moment in time because it is a video and it's not a live stream. But I'm telling you, if, we, if I put this on as a premiere, and this is highly likely, I'm going to be in the chat with you because I want to be able to talk it out with you guys as well. And I definitely want to be there to hear your thoughts. And that's why this particular video is longer. I'm making it long for a reason. I want everybody to be able to come in. I want everybody to be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You got to understand, man, this shit's different for everybody, people. We don't know how people think. All right? We'll never know what goes through the minds of the individuals who choose representatives for their country to present this person as the person that's going to represent the Philippines or Angola or the United States or, you know, Korea. We don't know. What is the criteria for their choosing? You understand? So I don't think we can be mad at the simple fact that they haven't chosen lately. I should say a pure Filipina lately or a pure Filipina that they believe is going to win it all lately. I don't remember the girl who represented last year, so she could have been pure Filipina. I just don't remember. I could look for her. What's her name? Miss Philippines. Uh, 20 what? That was 2017, Miss Philippines 2017. Miss Philippines 2017 was Rachel Peters? Is that who won? Yeah. Now, Rachel Peters is a Filipino British girl. <laughs> this, this, this is the shit that I'm talking about, okay? Okay, so let's, let's, I'm gonna do this right now. I got my phone with me. You can see her. She's British. Oh, you can't see her. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back in time, okay? So we had Catriona Gray, 2018. 2017, Rachel Peters, British Filipino model. Uh, Miss Philippines, we're gonna do 2016. I think that was Pia, but I'm gonna type it in just to make sure. Miss Philippines, 2016, was the winner was Maxine Medina. Okay, so I was wrong. So I think Pia Warsbacks was 2015, I guess. 
So Maxine Medina was the representative. She, as far as I know, is Filipina. It doesn't say that she's a Filipina mix. It just says that she's Filipino. So she represented the country and she is Filipina. As far as I know. All right. So let's go back after her. So Maxine Medina, pure Filipina as far as I know, even though she looked a little Spanish to me, not going to hold that against her. Okay. Let's go back to 2015. That was Pia. 2015 was Pia Wart's back, right? And she nailed that shit. Okay. I'm only going to go back a few more years. 2014 was Mary Jean La Timosa. <laughs> I couldn't get her name. She was Filipino and Arabian. Okay. So 2014, she was Filipina and Arabian. I'm going to go back just a few more years, guys. I'm just doing this to make a point. Okay. Uh, so, Miss 2013 was, who won that? Oh, uh, her name was Ariella Hernandez Arida. Hernandez, probably she has a little bit of Spanish in her as well. So, I say that to say this, most of the representatives in the past have all been <clears throat> mixed with something. Even if they've had pure Filipino names, you know, but the Hernandezes and the Gonzalezes, don't call me racist for this, but they normally have like a Hispanic, Latina vibe to them. So there is a high probability that somebody in that family bloodline, you know, is possibly Spanish or, you know, Latin American or something to that effect. That's what I will say. But this is what I'm saying, okay? For those that are still with me at this particular moment in the video, because I know I've been blabbing, I know. But I did this on purpose because this is what needed to be done. I wanted to make a video long enough to be able to get out everything that I wanted to say in this particular video. And I kind of proved my point. In the past years, there may have been only one or two representatives that were pure Filipina. If you can call them that. If you can say that. If you can say that. But like I said, man, we can't argue with results, ladies and gentlemen. A win is a win is a win. I'm going to take that dub every single time. And you got to be happy with the dub. So congratulations to the Catriona girl. She did her thing. Everybody give her a round of applause. Because she fucking deserved it. She went out there. She did her thing. Can't hate on that shit. Cannot hate. <laughs> and with that being said, guys, I think I'm good to go. I sincerely hope everybody's having a blessed day. I don't know what time it is in your world today, but I'm here and I'm happy to be here. Happy to have you guys as an audience. If you guys want to support the channel, you already know how to do so. But of course, the good doctor is happy that you come here and show just a little bit of love and spend just a little bit of time with the good doctor. Today, not on then. All right, you guys know where the Patreon is. You guys know how to contact me through email. Guys, make sure you get the likes up on this video, for sure. This is one of the defining moments. I like to call it a defining moment. Talking about the topics that people don't really talk about. And maybe some people have talked about it. But this is Dr. Mike's first time bringing it up and bringing it to the table, bringing it to the court, seeing what the court has to say about that, letting you guys go full on with it. So if you're not with me on the live chat, Make sure you comment in the uh, comment section below and let me know what you think, guys. It's been a hell of a ride, man. So congratulations to the lady once again. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular video. And without further ado, I think I'm good. The good doctor is officially out. At least knuckle. Ba'alam. Which means we are going now. Bye-bye. As always, love you guys. Mahal kita. Mabuhay. Peace.